Good morning. It's nice to see all of you here this morning. Uh, there's quite a bit going on in Grace, so let me uh, get going. Uh, and most of this information is available in your bulletin, so if you don't quite understand, you'll find the information here too. Please wear your name badges. Looks like we're pretty good. Um, immediately following the second service today, we will be inspecting and repacking the Operation Christmas Child boxes. Uh, you're welcome to join us and help us upstairs in the Friendship Hall. Um, from today until December 3rd, we will be collecting warm socks for the Freedom a la carte's holiday bags for survivors of human trafficking in our community. Our goal is 75 pairs of socks. And then next Sunday, the 19th, the annual meeting uh, will take place here at 1215. The youth will have their first Christmas program practice during the Sunday school hour. Uh, Nick Cosgrove will be here uh, doing his special Joyful Noise and premiering his album of holiday classics at 4 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And um, it will be the kickoff for our Angel Tree Children's Toys uh, for Christmas. Um, the Christmas tree is already up waiting for you to take um, uh, away a little uh, tag that says who you're getting your uh, gifts for. The Voices of Grace and Musicians of Grace will be performing at three concerts in Uptown Westerville on Friday evening, December 8th. And the Soup for Shelter Soup Supper will be immediately preceding the concerts. There's more information in the bulletin and we will begin selling uh, tickets um, at the desk in the, or at the table near the front door. Uh, and now a word from uh, Donna Detman for Arts and Environment. Good morning. I'm Donna Detman, and here to tell you about the A&E Nativity Fair. The fair is for those of us who wish to share our personal nativity sets with our church family here at Grace. The sign-up sheet is at the welcome desk. And then I don't have to show you my prop because I am a visual learner. <clears throat> this four-gallon crate is a medium nativity set, okay? How, what's small, medium, and large? Now you know. Uh, please put your name on your set and any information you would like for others to know, like it, who was the person that made it, how old is your set, how long has it been in your family, or anything else you would like to share. Bring your nativity set to the church from November 26th through December 1st. Tables will be set up in the cry room, which is the room at the back left as I'm looking, to your right as you're looking, uh, and leave it. Um, there are tables and you can display your nativity sets yourself or you can leave it for the A&E team to set up. The fair will be on display from December the 3rd to through December the 10th. Take your display home on December 10th after the one service at 10 a.m. that will be the service to welcome our new pastor, Wendell. This will give you and your family time to enjoy your nativity set at home. You'll find most of this information in today's bulletin on page 15 and also in the November Voice. Thank you. Please stand and face the baptismal font. <clears throat> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful Father, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. be with you. Let us pray. God of light and life, through your most holy spirit, illumine our lives with your grace, so that we may be ready for the coming of your Son. Grant that we may bear the light of your love to the world in need, that all may know your presence and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
A reading from Amos. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We always, at our house, keep a flashlight around and always know where these flashlights are when the lights go out so we can get around in the dark. Our house is in the woods, so it seems like our power goes out all the time. We check the batteries regularly to make sure they are still working. And nothing can be more frustrating than when the power goes out and the batteries are dead in your flashlights. So in the time that Jesus lived, people didn't have flashlights or batteries. Instead, they used oil lamps. And just as important for us to have a good supply of batteries for our flashlight, it was important for the people of Jesus' day to have a good supply of oil on hand for their lamps. One day, Jesus told a story using oil lamps to teach his disciples how important it was for them to be prepared for the day when he would return. In Jesus' story, a wedding was about to take place. The bride had ten bridesmaids, and they were waiting for the bridegroom to come and take them to his house where the wedding would take place. Weddings in those days were almost always at night, and the bridesmaids would light their lamps and lead the bride to the house of the bridegroom. Jesus said that while they were waiting for the bridegroom, the bridegrooms, the bridesmaids became tired and fell asleep. Suddenly, everyone was awakened by someone shouting, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. The bridesmaids jumped up and began to prepare their lamps. Five of the bridesmaids had not brought extra oil, so they didn't have enough oil to light their lamps. The other five had very wisely brought extra oil, so they were prepared and lit their lamps. The foolish brides asked to borrow some oil, but the wise ones were afraid there was not enough for them, so they told them to go buy some more of their own oil. The wise bridesmaids represent the true believer of Christ, who are prepared for his coming, while the foolish ones represent unbelievers. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came, and the five who were ready went with him to the wedding feast. And when the foolish ones brought more oil, bought more oil, and went to the groom's house, it was too late. The door had already been locked closed. And Jesus told his followers, So you must be ready, because you don't know when I will return. In this story, the bridegroom is Jesus, and you and I are the bridesmaids. The oil in the lamps is faith in Christ. The bridesmaids that were not sharing their oil represent that you cannot give, faith, give your faith to someone else, and you can't argue people to faith. You can plant the seeds of faith and lead them by example, but faith cannot be forced. The oil in the wise bridemaid's lamps represents their righteousness and obedience. We each fill our own lamp, which represents our own life with our obedience and righteousness. Jesus told us that he was going to come again and that if we were wise, we would be ready for his return. 
What can we do to make sure you and I are ready? We can read his word, do what it says, and put our trust in him. And if we do that, we will be ready. We will have oil in our lamp, and our light will be shining brightly to show others the way to him. Few human events are more weighted emotionally than weddings. I'm sure you guys can all relate to this. Parents invest heavily in time, energy, creative resources, and hope in the marriage ceremony for a son or daughter. Because they are so loaded with emotional content, weddings are fragile events with lots of potential for mishap and disaster. For one thing, the main characters, the bride, the groom, and their parents are stretched thin, and deep feelings come easily to the surface. There are tears at weddings and profound hope, but also sometimes anger, resentment, and frustration. Amid all that, things can go wrong and often do. Stories have been shared of the best man getting lost and never making it to the rehearsal. The bridal dress was the wrong size. The flowers were not delivered. The groom forgot the license and many more. And so it is significant that, at the, that near the end of his life, Jesus chose this most human, emotionally loaded event as the context for a parable about his kingdom. Weddings in Jesus' day were every bit as emotionally charged as ours are today, with the same potential for mishap. Guests assembled at the home of the bride and were entertained by their parents while waiting for the groom to arrive. When the bridegroom approached, the guests, including the bridesmaids, lit their torches and went out to greet him. In a festive procession, the entire party walked to the groom's home where his parents were waiting for the ceremony and the extended banquet that would follow and continue for several days. At first, all bridesmaids are indistinguishable. They each dress for the wedding and come to it. They carry their lamps and all say, Lord, Lord, and each of them falls asleep. What distinguishes the foolish and the wise is, ready, is the readiness for the bridegroom, even in the face of delay. The wise were prepared for delay. And when their faith in the bridegroom's return is tested, they have the resources available to sustain them. During life's joys and pain, ease and adversity, intrigue and boredom, the faith of the wise remains enough. They keep their light shining before others, continuing in community, study, and prayer, doing deeds of mercy, offering forgiveness, and spreading justice and peace. They have not relinquished their hope that the world and each one of us will one day be transformed and fully reconciled to God. With the Spirit's guidance, they have built into their lives the disciplines and habits of a lifetime that give hope and empower, live, empower living as if citizens of the kingdom of heaven. The early Christians had to adjust to the reality that Jesus did not return as they fully expected, and that their mission was to wait expectantly and in the meantime, live faithfully, courageously, and hopefully. It is still our mission today. At the heart of our faith is the certainty that human history has a purpose and a goal and that is moving forward toward eventual fulfillment and completion. We need to live expectantly and hopefully. Our Christian hope rests on trust that the God who created the world will continue to love the world with providence and will continue the process of creation until the project is complete and will continue to redeem and save the world by coming into it with love and grace in Jesus Christ. In every congregation, there are people genuinely afraid for their own personal future, possibly facing serious illness, surgery, or loss of employment. They, as well as us, need to hear the good news that the bridegroom will come, that the love of God will continue to appear in our lives surprising, in surprising and unexpected ways. 
Jesus comes when Christian people live in hope and never give up. Jesus comes when faithful disciples express love and compassion and work for justice. Jesus comes when critically ill people know they are ultimately safe in God's love. Heaven breaks into the earth when faithful women and men live in hope and give themselves to the work of the kingdom. Think about what it must have been like for the foolish bridesmaids. They could hear the laughter on the inside. They could hear the music. They could sense the joy and the celebration of those in attendance. How crushed they must have been to be on the outside and they regretted their foolishness. They just weren't ready. So being ready in Jesus' return is not passivity on our part. Instead, it is an active preparing, an active waiting, an active waiting and serving and doing justice in the world in the name of Christ. There is no reason to fear anything. God promised he would return in due time. We await this moment with active and vibrant faith. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Let us pray for the church, the world, and one another. Heavenly Father, we are sometimes foolish, not wise, scatterbrained, not prudent, reactive, not responsive. Forgive us. Remind us of the honor and privilege of being invited into your son's wedding feast. Give us the grace and wisdom of your Holy Spirit let us always rejoice, believe, and show the light of faith, hope, and love in this dark world. Lord, in your mercy. 
Make your church wise, faithful, pure, and watchful, rejoicing in the near approach of her bridegroom and savior. Make her worship joyful and pleasing in your sight, and her labors glorify you and help those in distress. Make her feasts a foretaste of your heavenly wedding banquet, feeding all with truth, righteousness, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, transform everyone in this congregation into lamps shining with your light and love. Keep us constantly worshiping you and serving others. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us share your grace and favor with those whose lights are flickering out. Lord, in your mercy, let your justice roll down like waters upon this parched and broken world. Let your righteousness fill the hearts and minds of all who are entrusted with authority. Especially, we pray, for elected and appointed leaders throughout the world. Give them your spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, so that they may bring peace, prosperity, justice, and healing to troubled lands, particularly the land of your covenant with Abraham. Lord, in your mercy. On this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for all who have honorably served our country. Grant wisdom, courage, integrity, and sound judgment to those currently serving in the armed forces who risk their lives for our security. Use their skills to bring freedom, safety, and justice to those areas where they serve. Keep them safe, shield their loved ones from fear and grief, and grant them a swift and joyful homecoming. Lord, in your mercy. Let all who seek your help in times of trial find deliverance from all that troubles them. We remember especially before you today, Rod Rice, Bob Bauer, Don Slemmer, Betty Lou Milner, Jan Perry, Janice Hardick, Joan Hassler, Grace Sima, Jan and Evelyn Boughton, John Moffat, Rick Aragine, Tammy Stone, Barbara Muller, Clarence Clapham, Joe Milano, and those whom we name in our hearts or out loud with our voices. Grant them help, salvation, comfort, and hope. When their lamps of faith seem ready to flicker and fade, rekindle them with the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Give a double portion of that same spirit to all those who minister to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You may now share the peace with one another.
please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hand. gathered in this for the celebration of Holy Communion we heard again the story of God's mighty acts and of the love shown to us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ with Thanksgiving we remembered that in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We were given assurance of our Lord's presence through the gift of his Holy Spirit. Now we receive the same bread of life and this same cup of blessing, that we may be strengthened through these gifts. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord would look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.